Right. Let's try this, shall we? No, that's rubbish. Hi, hello. No. Good afternoon. Well, actually, you could be any time where you are. Um, so, uh, you lose your thread so quickly on this thing. Hello, hi, it's Mike from Everyday Ups and Downs, and this is my first ever video blog. So, uh, you know, go easy on me, I don't know how this is going to work out. I um, am putting a little something on YouTube today because I've just been given the opportunity of living uh, for 64 days with the Minimed uh, 640G, uh, their new insulin pump uh, and sensor system. So um, I just thought today we would start with a few introductions. So hi, I'm Mike. I've had type 1 diabetes for about just over 25 years, been impersonating my own pancreas busily. Um, I was diagnosed in 1991, age 21, just after my 21st birthday, so happy birthday me. Um, and I uh, started out on injections, I started out on mixed injections, gosh those were the days, and uh, moved on to uh, MDI, to, to basal bolus, uh, through a succession of different insulins, um, ending up with Lantus and uh, Humalog, and then about four years ago I switched to use an insulin pump. Uh, and I've been uh, using the Minimed uh, Medtronic Veo pump for the last four years and uh, Medtronic have very kindly offered me uh, the chance of experiencing the 640G uh, with sensors for 64 days uh, and that's why I'm just sharing a little bit of, um, of, of how I get on with that and I thought today we would do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the, the Minimed Veo and the 640G. So those of you who have got Veos who might be given the opportunity of upgrading to a 640G, you'll just get a, a little bit of a glimpse about uh, some, of the, some of the main differences and the main similarities. So here's a side-by-side -side, uh, size comparison of, of my old Veo there, as R2, and uh, this is the new 640G. Um, and you can see they're pretty similar actually, there's not a lot in it. Um, the, the, the 640G is just a few millimetres wider, a few millimetres thicker, and a few millimetres longer. Um, this is a 5 series uh, Veo, this is the one that only takes the smaller cartridge size. And you'll see on the, on the 640G here, this sort of sticky outy bit, that's to take the longer, longer cartridge longer reservoir which is um uh takes 300 units um whereas whereas this one only takes 180 or, or thereabouts um the the smaller um the smaller 640s will be exactly the same size for the rest of it but they just won't have that little extended bit which which kind of does make a difference to me because because particularly if you wear it vertically on a belt i don't i tend to wear it horizontally but if you wear it vertically on a belt that's the sort of thing that can that can start digging in a bit when you're when you're getting up and down and sitting up, and, um, climbing in and out of cars and so on. Um, but um, but yeah, no. Broadly speaking, it's very similar in size. Um, just a few millimeters in it, uh, and in fact, in fact, here are the dimensions. So at this point I just want to briefly mention the belt clip on the 640G which is quite similar um, in a lot of ways to the belt clip uh, on the Veo. There's the Veo with the belt clip but the, the spring on the Veo has got a lot more, a lot more, well it's a lot more spring. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's a lot springier. So, um, so what you end up with is a pump that's slightly bigger and slightly heavier being held by a much more flippy floppy spring um, and uh, occasionally I find that a bit of a problem. I'll just I'll show you what I mean. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a really warm day, it's about the hottest day of the year so far today um, uh, and, and if I'm getting changed, if I've got jeans on and I want a pair of shorts on, with the, with the 640, with the, the Veo, what I just got myself in the habit of doing is I would take my t-shirt and I would just clip the Veo on and it would just, it would sit there quite happily um, 
and and it would be it would be firm enough that I could get changed um, and not even think about it. But unfortunately, because of the slightly less springy spring on the 640G, I just it doesn't there's there's not enough there's not enough grip on it to uh, to to hold it. So what I have to do now, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. Hello. What you have, what I have to do now is I have to clip it up there. So it's not the end of the world, but it's just a little tiny niggly thing that's maybe gone, oh, I wish, wish they hadn't done that. They've got a nice little trick where um, if, you, if you take the belt clip off, the end there now becomes a tool for a battery cap. So you don't have to worry about having um, uh, keeping, a, keeping a penny in your pocket. So a couple of obvious changes. Um, they've changed the orientation. It's gone uh, portrait rather than landscape. Um, and obviously they've included a lot more buttons. Uh, and uh, there's a four-way controller with a central OK in the middle. And then a menu and a back uh, a button there. And, and actually they've really, really have gone overboard trying to rework the, uh, the sort of user interface. With a great deal of success, I think um, they put a lot of thought into it. There are a few things that, which are going to drive you mad. They there always will be, but I think they've tried really hard to um, to make the menus logical and to to make it um, uh, sort of understandable and to put things kind of where you'd expect them to be. So if I just flick the screen on, um, I don't know how much of that you'll be able to see, um, but oh, I've got a low battery alert. That's interesting. There you go, all fully batteried up again. Sorry about that. Um, it's not bad battery life actually. I get about a fortnight out of a battery. That's that's with um, powering the sensors and uh, and checking the screen a lot. Obviously, um, looking at the graphs and and so on. That, that, that you know the the screen uh, powering the screen will take a lot of juice out of a battery. So um, so I think um, I think a fortnight's not so bad. Um, it, uh, it's a slightly larger battery. It's the it's a double A rather than um, rather than the triple A that was that was powering the Veo. But um, I quite like the fact that it's just a bog standard battery. And if you get caught short when you're out and about, you can just go into a go into a news agent and pick one up. Um, uh, it doesn't take anything special. You don't need to plug it in and recharge it. To be honest, the um, the Veo did last a lot longer. Although it was a smaller battery, it always lasted so much longer than the 640G. Um, I never ran the Veo with sensors, having said that, so I don't know whether that would have shortened the battery life. But um, but it's, uh, battery changes were so infrequent with this, I can't even work out how 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 often they came round. Um, one thing that the the 640, the one benefit the 640G does have over the Veo though, is the battery uh, indicator up here on the on the 640G. It's at the, this little colour coded top bar of icons. Green for for all good, and then it goes through amber and into red, and uh, and it's fairly consistent with the with the with the Ve. I always used to find because it only had three segments, three or four segments in its battery indicator. It would go down to one, and then go back up to two, and you go back down to one, and you'd never really know whether it was on its last legs or not. With the 640G, at least it tells you. At least you know when it's when it's uh, when it's nearly time for a change, and you can you can prepare yourself. So just back from uh, taking my daughter off for a lift, and you'll see that uh, as I was down there nearly five and had a swig of, swig of Lucasade, just because I, the smart guard, the orange bar there is smart guard kicking in, much more about that to come later. But uh, yes, hmm, I rather overcompensated for needing to be driving, So, uh, but it does give me the opportunity to, sh to show you the, uh, the trend arrows just there uh, next to the sensor reading. Um, which uh, which show um, steeply rising or steeply falling. If it's relatively steady, you'll just get a number there. And then again, you got uh, on this home screen, you get uh, you get the status bar icons, uh, which uh, in include how much you know what the state of your your uh, reservoir is, how full it is. Because of course now there's no window, so you don't get that little visual uh, visual clue of of whether or not the plunger's nearing the end. So uh, it goes from green through amber to red. Um, whether you've got um, vibrate uh, off or on, and whether it's uh, whether the the volume, what the sort of volume level is like, volume levels are much improved on the on the 640G. You can really can crank it up. Um, 
uh, I took them up uh, early on to quite high levels and I've actually had to bring them da back down again because it really was quite piercing. Um, and then also, if you're running sensors up here, you'll get uh, you'll get the calibration one when your next calibration is due, and then how many days are left on the sensor. Um, and then at the bottom, the two the two kind of um, main things you're going to be wanting to muck about with um, bolus uh, if you just want to be doing manual bolusing, um, and then base or temp, setting temp bases and 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 other things. So so it's pretty much at your fingertips what you would want down there this it's probably much easier for you to 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 see what's going on on these it's it's too small here really um i'll put a link put a link down there so you can um you can see uh you know have a good look online uh, at the at the layout of the of the menus but they have they have worked quite hard to make the user interface uh, make make sense i think also available from this uh, from this home screen, uh, you can drill into each of these sections. As you can notice on this four-way controller, well, five-way including the OK button, um, as it as you move up and down, it's highlighting different parts of the screen. Um, and so, if for example you're you're highlighting the, the the sensor trace there, you just click to OK it, and then unlock, and then you can there, there's your three-hour trace, and you can quickly scroll back all the way down back through to to 24 hours. Look how many smart guards I've had. Good grief, that's just ridiculous. I had no idea it was like that. It's been quite a rocky day today. Um, and, and then one nice touch uh, is that if you're if you're deep within some menus or, or you and you just want to leap back, if you just press and hold this back button, it just bounces you straight back to the home screen. Uh, and similarly, if you've finished whatever you're wanting to do and you want to, want to be saving battery life, you can just press and hold the menu button uh, and it puts it in sleep mode. Um, so you just press and hold. Uh, either of those, and it's a sort of it's a it's a shortcut out. I'm just going to make an observation um, at this point uh, about the the general principle menu principle on the 640G because I think it is important to kind of get your head around um, if you're considering uh, moving to it from a Veo uh, or from another pump, in fact. Um, it, it, which is that because they've got this four-way controller um, and they've also got this unlock button. Um, a lot of the interactions that you're going to do are going to need an extra couple of button presses, perhaps, over, over what you're used to. Once you've got used to it, actually, it's, it, it's, they're of no consequence. But, um, but I do know from reading other reviews of people who've moved from an old version of a pump to a new ver newer version of the pump, that extra button presses are the sort of thing that do drive people slightly nuts. Um, but th there's always a sort of reason for it here. For example, if, if we go into the bowler's wizard now, if I had a, um, if I manually enter the, uh, a reading like that, um, because um, because each of these sections you can scroll up and down to, it needs to know when you're active, when when that one is active. So you scroll to it and then you press once to activate it, and then you have to press again the number of times. Um, for you to do it, and then you have to press again, and, and then it, it it does leap down. You know, it does help you out, but there's often there's just an extra button press, and the one button press which is always there, which I I kind of wish was a was an option really, um, was the unlocking. I never put the lock on on my Veo. It was always unlocked, and if I wanted to to do anything, um, it was always just a button press away. Uh, if I wanted to look at my last last um, glucose reading, for example, there. Um, it would be from the from the home screen. It would be one press, and there's my meter reading. So if I couldn't remember what my last what my last finger stick was, I could look it up. Now, obviously, on the 640G, if you're using sensors, your current reading is there. But if it, if if you want to look up what your last finger stick was, I now have to go up and up, and then into that, and then I have to unlock, and then I have to go into quick status, say, and then. I can come down to there's my last there's my last uh, finger stick reading there, so from one from one press here you've got quite a few more presses here, but really that's only because the menu system is more complex and it allows you to do more things uh, in more directions. So there is a reason for it, but but don't be surprised if you if you shift to the 640G that you'll be having to you just have to learn it's like you're getting a new phone really you just have to learn the new way of doing things. Another um, just menu to quickly go through um, at this stage is the basal basal menu. Just unlock again, um, 
uh, you've got more patterns uh, on the on the 640G. The Veo only the Veo had three, which was fine, um, but the 640G has got uh, has got up to five, and they they are listed here as many as you have activated. So I've actually only set up two um, currently, and they, some of them have got interesting names. You can you can have either Basel one, Basel two, or there are some named ones. Uh, I can't remember quite they're all, what they're all called. Hang on, I'll just look them up. There you go. Um, uh, so you can't change those names, unfortunately, but um, but they're reasonably useful, and uh, and you know you'll you'll remember what you're using each of those for. Another nice thing, actually, if we come out into insulin settings on the basal menu, is that um, if we go into basal pattern setup there, uh, you can now take one of your existing patterns, um, and if you go into options, it allows you to copy it. To one of the other versions that you have have not currently populated, um, which is a really nice thing. You, know, you can you can take um you can take uh, a whole pattern and you can clone it into an empty slot uh, and then make some tweaks. So it's quite useful for experimentation. Another thing, while we're on the subject of basils, is temp basils. Um, the, the, from the basil menu. Uh, the temp basil is, is the first thing you come to. Obviously, it's it's something that I set quite a lot. Um, they've they've made it um, uh, settable in fifteen minute increments now, which I quite like. You can have a little bit more precision than just the half hour chunks on the Veo, um, and uh, and then you can you can set either a, uh, you can set it by rate or you can set by percent, and that's something you'll you'll set up in the settings. Um, but you can override it on a case by case basis. Um, so you just you would click into percent like that. And you would set your temp um, your basal level, and then you would begin it. But the best news is, when you'd set a, a temporary basal on the Veo, on the hour, every hour, it would make this noise. There you go. For no reason at all. Through the night, if you set a temporary basal, it will be chirping away and disturbing you. But on the 640G, silence. And the best thing is um, that at the end of the temporary basal, when you when you actually wanted to be told, and the veil would keep stonily silent, the 640G now gives you a little beep to let you know it's the temp basal has finished, which is perfect. To be honest, I would choose this pump on that feature alone. So there you go. That was just a really quick whistle stop tour of some of the similarities and differences I've spotted between the veil and the 640G in these first few weeks of use, and. Um, uh, I really like this pump. There's a lot more to say about it. I'll go into a lot more detail about SmartGuard and uh, and how it's been helping me over the last few weeks. Um, but thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you've got any questions, leave us a comment below. Uh, and I'll uh, I'll put some links for some more coherent information in the description so you can follow up and find out a bit more about it. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.